you might say I've made too many videos about Drobos and hard drives recently. Uh, to that, my response is, I haven't made enough videos about Drobos and hard drives recently. Um, this will probably will be the last one, at least for the moment, as I uh, must admit, I think I have something of a uh, problem that needs uh, help addressing in terms of just finding these uh, Drobo things and uh, just like network attached storage in general, very slightly irresistible. Now, again, to be fair, I absolutely cheaped out on this. I did get it at a uh, reasonable discount again, because this is the Drobo um, 800FS. This is the big Drobo. This is still network attached storage. It's not the uh, 12 bay iSCSI um, version, but uh, this takes eight hard drives um, and is basically uh, network attached. And so I thought, as I've got this, why not take a nice new Drobo and pair it with some nice old hard drives. These are all uh, quite ancient hard drives of, uh, well, I say ancient, uh, out of warranty at least, uh, at least that old. So I figure, why not pair the two together? So let's get it open. Now, once again, this is going to be something of a one-handed unboxing, so you'll have to excuse me if the camera is a little shaky, but uh, once again, as we've seen before on our previous unboxings, they uh, all come with a welcome to the world of dot 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 box. Uh, in this case, a slightly grubby one, but uh, no matter. Drobo. And stickers, manual. What else do we have here? Nice mains cable. Nice uh, gigabit network connection. And... Uh, so some simple, powerful Drobo Care, ah. and a resource CD, and ooh, what do we have underneath there? Ah, another network cable, and uh, oh, and a USB cable. Oh yes, of course. That's one of the things about the uh, Drobo 800 is that it actually has uh, dual gigabit network connections, which I will hopefully be able to demonstrate when I've got it unboxed. Um, I, I imagine, I believe the intention of that is that in uh, various uh, high-powered uh, business type situations you can either uh, configure those interfaces to give you uh, dual redundancy so that you have, uh, if, if one of your network switches goes down, you still uh, keep the files moving, or whether there's, or, or you can, I think, uh, sort of like bind them together in some kind of way, which um, uh, theoretically, at least on a, on a gigabit network, gives you a bit of an extra throughput. So, oh, I don't know. <laughs> we have another network cable. We are, we, <laughs> network cables in abundance today. This is uh, lovely and wonderful, but let's see. Oh, this is going to require two hands, but let's get this out of the box. And there it is. Now, uh, as you've seen from the uh, smaller Drobos with their removable front cover, Drobo 800 also has the same kind of thing going on. And there are eight awaiting empty disk drive bays, waiting for the uh, high quality storage, which we are going to uh, show them. Around the back, something of a minimalist uh, network panel. We have, uh, oh, I'm not completely sure what that is. That, uh, oh, I see. That's a USB port, for reasons which I'm unknown, because I don't think this is actually USB attached, so I don't quite know where that's coming from. We have two gigabit Ethernet interfaces, uh, space for the mains, and the uh, usual traditional uh, Drobo uh, power button there. Also a uh, space for a Kensington lock if we wish to make sure that uh, nobody can break in and run away with it. So, let's give it some mains, and some Ethernet. So, let's get this turned on. Nice array of yellow lights there as we start up. Right, that looks a lot more like what we expect. Um, green light shows ready to go. Red light shows a hard drive would be useful right about now. I should point out also the drive uh, mounting tabs on the Drobo 800 are sort of like slightly different in format to those that you see on the uh, more slimline design that you see on the Drobo 5s, but uh, no matter, it's nice. So let's get some nice old hard drives in here. We're talking about hard drives of a 
nice high quality historic vintage um, and actually uh, let's start with this one this is a Western Digital hard drive it is a it is an impressive 300 gigabytes um, we can see from its manufacturing date of 2007 that it is long long past its warranty and in fact this has been recovered from what our American cousins would call a DVR or here in the UK we know as a Sky Plus HD box uh, basically a television recorder in which, in which uh, environment hard drives get, ab get basically abused quite substantially because they're spinning pretty much 24-7 for years at a time so I figure if anywhere is a good place to put, to, put them uh, to their, uh, their final resting homes where they can live out a useful life until uh, their inevitable demise um, some, uh, a place with some kind of uh, redundant storage like a Drobo would probably be a good place to go so let's uh, bless the Drobo with drive number one if of course I can get it in I can't put it the right way around it's need quite a shove but I bet I've put it in the wrong way around I bet I've put it in the wrong way around I bet I have to do it the other way maybe that's where it's, why it's not working right okay Let's try let's try it again the right way round. God damn it. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the fail. Um, I have now jammed the drive in the Drobo and it's not gonna come out. Let's try it two-handed. Yes, force wins the day. Okay, so we don't put them in that way, we put them in that way, or at least apparently so. Let's see if that works any better. You really do need to give it a considerable shove to... Uh, oh yes, but that goes in so much better. And as we see from uh, over on the Mac, let me bring up the screen so you can see that a bit more clearly. Um, we see that hopefully the Drobo will resonance the red register the presence of the drive. We can see it's uh, already having fun with its lights and uh, should fairly uh, judiciously come along to... Uh, And it should at least uh, notice that there is a drive in place. Okay, yes, it sees that, 300 gigabytes. And how much capacity do we have? Robo does not detect any hard drives. Well, there is a hard drive in there, that's not fair. Please insert a hard drive immediately. Mind well, you, mind, it still says the Drobo device is also starting up, so. And we can see that the dashboard is not quite reflecting the uh, green and red status that. Uh, so, uh, possibly it's just not aware of the uh, amount of drives in there. So you can see, you can definitely see that one, but uh, maybe there's a problem with the... Uh, possibly a problem with the drive itself, don't know. Actually, looks like we've uh, missed something out. Check for updates. How could we not check out... Oh, a <laughs> scheduled, uh, scheduled update check is already in progress. My apologies. Okay, Drobo cannot protect your data against hard drive failures until you provide at least two drives. Well, that's fine, we know that, but... Uh, a scheduled update check is already in progress. Okay, but we come to the status, and yes, now it's uh, showing us a bit more of what's happening. It's showing grand total of 78 gig free on that drive. I don't quite know why that would be quite so low, but because uh, uh, I'm not quite sure why it would only be showing 80 gig of what is a uh, 300 gig hard drive, unless there's uh, some kind of funkiness from the partitioning from when it came out of a DVR. That does possibly uh, make sense because um, the Sky Plus HD box that this will have come out of actually does partition the drive into two um, areas of user space. Uh, one for uh, recordings uh, selected by the user and another for recordings uh, pushed by the broadcaster themselves. So it's possible that something like that is going on. If, if that is the case that would be a little bit uh, funky and difficult to deal with. I suppose I could uh, take the drive out and uh, try and uh, uh, blat it back into a for into a completely unpartitioned state. Um, but I, I would have thought the Drobo would have done that by itself, but seemingly not on this occasion. Anyway, let's see what happens next. So we can see from the capacity that it's uh, still trying to uh, work out its uh, initial setup. So 
perhaps it's actually doing a uh, software update by itself. Maybe that would explain what's uh, going on, because certainly I know it wouldn't allow me to uh, interrupt from the dashboard. But uh, as you can see, that scheduled automatic update check is still already in progress. But uh, let's uh, wait patiently until we see some capacity. Yes, there we are. That's what we'd expect. So it sees well. It's showing us a total of 80 gig. Now that's more or less half of 160. Um, so that is actually less capacity than I would expect from this drive. But uh, as I say, we know from our previous video that uh, if you only put one drive in a Drobo, the capacity it declares is exactly half of what it can see, so that it can at least store the data twice on one drive. It's not the Drobo isn't designed to run like that for any significant amount of time. You're meant to put in more drives so that it can. Uh, distribute the uh, data across all the drives and make sure there's physical redundancy as well as most physical storage redundancy on just uh, two copies on one drive. But uh, the funkiness of that aside, um, let's uh, continue. And so drive number two. Coming in we have a Samsung HD 400 LJ and some 400 gigabytes on this drive. This is a 7200 RPM drive and is made by Samsung. And to be fair, Samsung hard drives usually have awful lot of good things uh, said about them. But as we can see from the uh, date on here, this dates back to about 2006. So once again, this drive has had a good life on it. This drive actually came to me um, secondhand via being um, installed in an eBay in a media center PC that I bought secondhand on eBay and that was many years ago as well so this drive has been spinning pretty much 24 hours a day for a good long time as it turns out though it seems to have sort of like uh, had no problems in its lifetime and again uh, placing it into the Drobo seems like a good way of ensuring that it gets a uh, uh, lives out the rest of its years um, in being used well so let's get that one in so that's drive number two. Wait to see what happens on the capacity as the Drobo wakes up and notices it has a second drive available. See how, how much that goes up by. I imagine it probably won't go up by very much at all because, no, well, no, there we go, 160 gig. So, right, that's actually again what we'd expect. It's uh, You can see it's starting to distribute the uh, data. <laughs> of course there is no data on this, but it's, it's, it's notionally intending to distribute the data across these two drives. So Drobo is obviously the opinion that this is a 160 gig hard drive, um, so fair enough. And you say, well this is a 400 gig hard drive, why is that, uh, why is that happening? But uh, obviously it's saying, well this is 160 gig, so I'll mirror that to this one, and the, the, other drive, the, the other space on that drive will be reserved for future expansion as more and more of these slots get filled up. So let's not keep it waiting, let's give it another drive. Contender number three is a Western Digital Green Power Drive. Now, these were this was actually one of the very first uh, green drives, if I'm not mistaken. This dates from 2008. So, uh, again, this was a drive which I per I actually purchased this new, but it was uh, basically a second drive in that uh, Media Center PC that I uh, bought secondhand. So, I bought this looks like to upgrade the 400 gig to a handsome. Uh, 400 plus 750, which is uh, not a round number. Let's give that a spin in drive bay number three. You really have to push that uh, flat, that uh, grey tab down with quite some degree of force, and uh, it, it's not it's not a task for the um, for the cautious. But uh, once you do it, you know that it's not going to break anything, and uh, you soon get into the swing of things. So let's see how our capacity goes. Actually, we've not got any lights flash. Oh no, there we go. We have the lights, and let's see what the capacity is now. Currently at 157.96 gig. Let's see what 750 gig makes of it. I'm guessing we'll get four, five hundred maybe. Five, five hundred and sixty is my guess. That basically being 400 plus 160. Okay, it's detected the new drive and it's gone to 527 gig. 
this is an awful lot of <laughs> it's a very small amount of storage for a lot of such a lot of spinning disc and also um, we're, not, we're not doing any uh, funkiness at the moment with uh, dual disc redundancy we've only got it set up for one disc redundancy so if this drive fails then for example then we'd have to get another drive in pretty quickly otherwise there would be a possibility of data loss and if any of the other drives fail while it's rebuilding then you know bad times are ahead but uh, while the array is empty, we may actually put, um, may actually turn on dual drive redundancy just to see what uh, difference it makes in terms of capacity. Drive number four, a Toshiba one terabyte drive. Now this is actually, as you can see, is actually quite new. This is technically speaking still in warranty. It's, it's a SATA six hard drive, but it's only a terabyte, which these days I suppose is comparatively small. Um, this, this again, gas. This actually came with a new PC that I bought and um, basically didn't need it. So, again, let's, this drive, as you may notice, is actually very slightly thinner than the average hard drive, so I'm wondering if I might actually have some difficulty getting this in here, but uh, hopefully not. Let's see what happens. Oh, yes. Let's see what effect that has on the capacity. 528 gig at the moment, but what will it rise to? We've added a terabyte, so I think we might get up to 750, maybe even actually a full terabyte, if we're lucky. See how it goes. 1.9 terabytes, or 1.19 terabytes, I should say. That's a, quite a difference there. So, four drives, about a terabyte and a bit. <laughs> Again, it's almost not worth getting out of bed for, but so these are all relatively old hard drives, and while I have nothing newer to put in these slots, it seems like a nice way of using them up. Because then, at least, eventually, if I do start storing an awful lot of data on this, and eventually it start, starts running out of drive space relatively quickly, it then just becomes a matter of going along and saying, OK, this is the smallest hard drive, let's replace this with something bigger. And then you just uh, cycle through them pretty much in order. Let's add something new. So, this is a Western Digital Green Drive. Uh, this is actually one of the... Oh, again, this, this, is, this is quite old. We have a date on it, uh, April 2010. So it's been around for a while. It's well out of warranty. But when this came along, this was actually one of the first um, uh, what Western Digital call advanced format drives, um, which required all kinds of uh, uh, weird software and factory jumpers and the kind of things like that to uh, make it work on uh, uh, software like Windows XP. Um, apparently every other OS was perfectly happy with was like just seeing the hard drive but uh, apparently for Windows XP it was a little bit more traumatic. I actually used this in a Windows 7 machine. Again this was a sort of like a 24-7 a spinning disk in my media center machine for many years. It stored an awful lot of data for a long time. No obvious problems but again out of warranty so not something you'd entrust your only copy of data to but more than adequate to go in a storage array where you get good enough warning that something is going wrong if indeed it is. So add that in to the mix and we'll see what that difference that makes. <laughs> it's made a difference of 0 0.01 terabytes. I'm sure that's not its final answer. Let's uh, keep watching. 2.1 terabytes. So, Again, that's um, kind of the risk you run when you put um, large drives, or large-ish drives, larger than your other drives. If you, if you have a very unbalanced um, set of drives in a Drobo, you'll always find that the largest drive you add kind of, sort of like, out in a sense, you, n you never really get the best capacity out of it because it can never exceed on that drive alone the amount of storage it's got on these other four. Now, those, are the, those, those initial four drives Drobo was storing 1.19 terabytes on them. This is a two terabyte drive, but of course it's still having to protect against the potential failure of that entire drive. So it can't run the risk of losing the two terabytes of data on this drive and hoping that it's uh, stored across the remaining 1.19 terabytes here. That's not enough. So it can only basically use about 1.19 terabytes on this drive to ensure that if it does fall out of the array that the remaining four drives can actually keep keep up the slack. So again that's kind of uh, it's like a bit a bit of one of the quirks of the way that Drobo works. Uh, well not exactly a quirk, I mean it's, it's exactly as designed and it's exactly what you'd want. You wouldn't want it any other way because the last thing you want is for some drives to fail and say oh actually that drive was so big I've lost some of your data already. That's, that's not what you want. 
So it's uh, it's working for the best, and we'll see what happens actually when I bring in uh, our final driver of the evening. Uh, this is this is actually new. This is actually in this is actually in warranty. So. Uh, 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 this was a WD Green Drive. Uh, again, the, you, you'll, you'll see there's no talk about advanced format on this anymore, or running it under Windows XP. Uh, those days, obviously, sort of like quite gone. But uh, this is the exception uh, to the rule in this particular array, in that uh, this drive is actually fairly new and still under warranty. But we'll stick it in because all of my other Drobos just have much larger drives than this, and two terabytes is, ironically, just a little bit too small in this day and age. But uh, I think that's as far as I go. I won't, won't sort of like fill it up for the sake of it. We'll, we'll leave ourselves a bit of, bit of uh, some free slots, because uh, who knows what joy will come along in the future. Wait for it to uh, see the drive and uh, light up the indicator. There we go. And if I keep an eye, that added very quickly. Then we've got a nice 3.88 terabytes. So that's not bad. You know th th that'll do for now. That's uh, certainly larger than the storage that I have on one of my, on another uh, NAS device, which is uh, the Western Digital Share Space I mentioned in the last uh, uh, video. Um, that's four by one terabyte drives in RAID five. So the effective usable cap uh, capacity of that is about two point six terabytes. So we've got three point eight terabytes here. That's not bad. I'm quite content with that. What we can do is have a quick look at the. Uh, dashboard to see uh, how it feels about uh, the status of every individual drive. See it's going to give us it's going to give us about an hour of data protection even though there's absolutely nothing on these drives and there, there's basically no data to be duplicated. It seems to like doing that. But uh, what I do actually notice is that the, or at least in this version of the Drobo dashboard, I don't seem to be able to get information on every individual drive. So I suppose I, I can't imagine why that would be, but it uh, seems to be the way it works. What this one offers also, um, I think this might be unique to the DB800s, is the opportunity, if I, ha if I really did have uh, money to burn, I could buy another one of these and, set it, and set, what, set it up to basically be a slave device of this, so that every time data was written to this array, it's also written to another array, um, a, another separate Drobo with another separate load of drives on it which is um, for a, ni a nice way of making sure you've got ultra, ultra redundancy because ultimately even in a Drobo ca 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 configuration like this where you have uh, protection against only one or potentially any two drives from failing um, what happens if the Drobo blows up? What happens if the power supply fails? Okay, you can replace one of those but what happens if, the power, if, if it gets struck by lightning? What happens if this physical unit itself dies um, or if something goes wrong and there's a, there's a problem with the firmware or something and it, and it basically sprays crap across all of the drives you know even with the best will in the world even with as much intended redundancy as you can get while you've got spinning disks in just one unit there is still a possibility of failure there is still the chance that you, to, to like something could go terribly wrong and you just lose everything inside here so that, I suppose, is the circumstance which DroboSync is uh, designed. Uh, to, be, to be honest, it's probably a little bit beyond my reach at the moment. I don't uh, see the need to uh, really uh, have, have another hot standby, especially only for, say, what, what according to this at the moment, at maximum, is uh, one point, uh, sorry, 3.8 terabytes of data. So, But uh, just for giggles, let's see if we can turn on the... Uh, uh, redundance, drive redundancy. Let me remember where that is. It's in general settings, I believe. So if I set this to dual disk redundancy, and let's do that just for the sake of it. Ah, and and actually that answers my question. It, it gives you, it tells you before you actually run it. It says that uh, that day that data capacity reduces down to two point two terabytes. Um, which uh, possibly, in the case here, we have an array of quite old drives. Um, maybe that would be a sensible thing to do. Maybe these drives are actually more more likely, um, to, um, more at risk of failure. Perhaps that would be a sensible per precaution. Uh, then again, perhaps not. 
possibly the, what mitigates against it slightly is that if any one of these drives fails, these are small drives. Um, so uh, the risk of another drive failing in the relatively short amount of time it will take in between to make up for, say, 160 gig writing it across the other drives of the array, hopefully the risk wouldn't be that, that uh, great. This would be a completely different matter if you had, say, six terabyte drives or eight terabyte drives in them, because um, Losing one of those out of the array, okay, even if your data is protected, when a new one goes in, it's going to take a long time to rebuild that, that array. It's going to take 12, possibly 24 hours, possibly more than that. Uh, the uh, Drobo dashboard was giving me some uh, estimates um, on the, during the last video. It was saying, like, oh, this is going to take a couple of days to fix, but uh, in the end it wasn't anything like that long. But uh, you see, that's, uh, that's the kind of time that you need to recognise that that's a notional window where your data could be at risk, depending on uh, what, what level of redundancy you've set up. So in this case, I think, you know, because this is fairly small, because I'm not going to be storing anything particularly critical on it for the moment, I'm actually not going to put it, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it on single drive rather than dual drive redundancy. Um, and so that gives us our 3.89 terabytes of storage, and uh, hopefully that should be, uh, at least give these drives something to do for a good amount of time to in the future. So, Drobo is the place where hard drives go to die. Now, actually, that's not much of a marketing slogan, is it? I don't think they probably, don't think they probably wouldn't go for that. But uh, anyway, it uh, puts these drives to reasonably decent use and uh, gives them a bit more life and also makes it a bit more convenient because, I mean, the last thing you want to do, if you've got four terabytes of data to store, you don't want to store them across six separate drives and just, like, plugging them in my USB or something like that. It's just a nuisance. That's really what uh, actually attracted me about the Drobo was the idea that you just keep slinging drives in and it's just all one single continuous piece of solid space. So from my point of view, that's fine. That's what I want, and uh, that does the job. So uh, as I say, I'll, I'll keep it uh, brief, like uh, not another one hour long uh, masterpiece like last time. But uh, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, you know, please leave them, and uh, see you next time.